Britain's House of Commons began debate today on the formal process of leaving the European Union. And there are few stronger supporters of the move than the UK's fishermen, who say that EU control of what they can catch and wear is bad for the trade. Hind Hassan traveled to the south coast of England to find out what the industry is expecting now that Brexit is moving forward. Andy's been fishing these waters for more than 20 years. In that time, he's seen the number of fishermen like him decrease dramatically. He says the common fisheries policy, the rules and regulations governing fishing in the EU since the early 80s, has made it difficult to maintain their livelihood. The work is tough. This is their eighth day in a row fishing, around nine miles out into this part of the Atlantic. After four hours, the nets are reeled in so that they can sort through their catch. So which fish are you going to have to throw back into any, the sea? Any haddock there today will be have to be thrown back Can you show me outside. which one's the haddock? Well, this, is, this, one. this is a haddock here, yeah. Right. And tell me why you have to throw that back in. Because um, we've got 300 kilo per month quota on this type of fish, and we caught that the first day of the month, so... So you can't keep it? No, it back it'll in. be illegal to keep it, yeah. Even though it's dead? Even though it's dead, it's going back over the side. What do you think of that? Well, it's just ludicrous, really, isn't it? Fishing in the European Union is really complicated because there are so many regulations. Fishermen can't just sail anywhere and catch whatever they want. Each member state has a specific quota for each species, and that quota changes in different parts of EU waters. Some countries can also sail further into foreign territory than others. For example, here in the English Channel, French boats can catch almost seven times more haddock and nine times more cod than English ones. British fishermen say that the rules need to change because the policy is largely based on fishing data from the 1970s. But supporters of the system argue that the quota has maintained and in some cases increased fish stocks. Roger owns this trawler. He says they welcome conservation efforts, but they also want a fair share. What do you think will actually happen when the United Kingdom leaves the EU? Do you think there will be a difference? History would dictate that will be sold down a river. Because every British government since 1970 has done that. But they've said that, you know, fishing is at the forefront and they'll look after the fishermen. But most fishermen that I know are very wary of that. And we'll have to wait and see. Since the 1970s, landings of fish in the United Kingdom has more than halved. It's led to a decline in the number of fishermen, dropping from 20,000 to just 12,000 in the past 25 years. You know, I've been fishing for 30 years. My family are fishermen. My father was a fisherman. I'm the sixth generation fishing, and I think another 10 years in the European Union, that'll be it. The fish caught by Andy, Roger, and other British fishermen are sold to wholesalers or auctions like this one. 250, yeah, 250, 260. They include local fisheries and businesses, but nearly half of all UK fish and fish products are exported, and 80% of those exports are to the EU. Before the UK finally leaves the Union, politicians will need to negotiate what will happen to the fishing industry. Robert's business sells fish across the UK, but he also has international clients. He says that leaving the EU is an opportunity to get a better deal. Isn't there a danger that if the United Kingdom created its own fisheries policy, that any trade it does with the European Union would see tariffs imposed? But we do face the risk that our fish will be tariffed when it goes into the market. Possibly the greatest risk is that our governments will use fisheries and the access to fisheries as a bargaining tool. Fisheries is not a huge GDP contributor. So we are worried in the industry that we might be used once again as a pawn in trade negotiations. UK vessels landed some 697,000 tonnes of fish in 2015, worth $980 million. But that's still less than 1% of the country's GDP. Fishing communities hope that that figure will grow once they leave the EU.